After 16 years of playing the classical guitar, I've encountered quite a lot of misconceptions <laughs> about this instrument and how it's played. So in today's video, I thought it'd be fun to debunk some common classical guitar myths. The next several myths that I'm going to attempt to debunk here <laughs> all have to do with how classical guitarists play Baroque music. I think it's a wonderful thing that classical guitarists have adopted uh, Baroque and Renaissance music uh, transcriptions as part of their core repertoire. This is great, please do keep it up. But I've really spent the last 10 years since I graduated with two degrees in classical guitar focusing on the Baroque period and trying to understand how to play Baroque instruments, how to play from the original notation, and be as historical as possible. And since I specialize in that time period, I've noticed that classical guitarists don't always do the things that we now know are historical. So these are myths that I think classical guitarists generally believe about Baroque music. Quick disclaimer, these are of course my opinions. I do believe they're grounded in historical fact, most of them, but if you disagree, let me know why in the comments. Also, if I missed some, add them to the comments. Myth number one, you should never use vibrato in Baroque music. A very commonly held belief about Baroque music is that you shouldn't sing vibrato or use vibrato on your instrument. Vibrato is an oscillation in pitch on a sustained note. So singers, when they sing, it's a, they have this natural phenomenon of this vibrating pitch. And on guitar, we can do it by pushing the string to the left and pulling it to the right to create that wobbling effect. Electric guitars do it by bending the string up and down. This is a well-known, great effect to use in romantic music. It's so beautiful on high notes. When you look at violin players, they're just constantly doing vibrato and cello players. It's a very wide sound. 19th century opera singers singing bel canto music also have a constant vibrato. But the myth here is that in the Baroque period, you just shouldn't use vibrato. This is a mistake. We actually know from treatises that vibrato was used. It was just considered an ornament rather than a constant. In fact, for Baroque guitar music and lute music, some composers even had a symbol, a special symbol for it. They could write on very specific notes when they wanted vibrato. For example, in the famous piece by Gaspar Sanz, Canarios, uh, he writes that symbol more than a dozen times throughout the piece. So on high notes, like the seventh fret, he writes the symbol, which kind of looks like a, like a hashtag, and the ninth fret as well. So rather than playing, you get. Myth number two, don't use slurs in Baroque music. This is not a myth that I've heard a thousand times, but I have heard it enough where I thought I'd mention it in this video. Very often when classical guitarists are playing Baroque music, they're playing music that was originally intended for the lute. I was once playing in a masterclass with a very famous world-renowned guitarist. I will not name this person. <laughs> we were talking about this piece uh, by Bach. <laughs> And I finished performing the whole piece for him and he looked at me and he said, take out all the slurs. And I was baffled. Uh, I said, why? And he said, because the lute did not slur. If you don't know, slurs are things like hammer-ons and pull-offs. Notes that you do entirely in the left hand. But even I as a 19 year old had played some lute and looked at the manuscripts and seen that they wrote a lot of slurs in. Crazy amount of slurs really. And while I haven't heard this myth a thousand times, I've heard it a couple dozen times and it's a bit disturbing for me. So. The Baroque lute and Baroque instruments in general, fiorbo, Baroque guitar, Baroque lute, arch lute, in the music, in the facsimiles, there's a sign for slurring, which is the same sign as we use today, kind of like a swooping line connecting several notes. They slurred all the time. It's a very common thing about Baroque music. So if you're playing Baroque music on the classical guitar, to play with slurs is to sound more Baroque. And you can add them even if the composer didn't write them. So if you're playing music by Bach, for example, which is actually not written for a guitar and not written for a lute either, we'll get there in a minute, <laughs> you can add lots of slurs to make the music sound much more Baroque. 
If you'd like to learn more about how to play Baroque music on the guitar, you can check out my one-hour workshop I did with my online school, Arpeggiato. In this video, I talk about how to improvise Baroque ornamentation, play Baroque dances, play in a Baroque style, and much more. You can watch that by clicking on the link in the description. And while you're there, you can watch over 30 plus hours of workshops and masterclasses I've done at my online music school. All right, back to the video. Myth number three, cross string trills are great for Baroque music. In the Baroque style, it is expected that we ornament a lot in an improvisatory way. We do this even when it's not written, and there are really trills everywhere. Trills are these beautiful improvised ornaments that you can add between two notes very quickly that sounds kind of like little bird tweet. But it has become standard practice among most classical guitarists I see today to say trills are done in the right hand across strings. And it sounds something like this. Essentially what they're doing is they take the two notes of the trill and they're playing it on different strings so they can go back and forth with like a tremolo fingering in the right hand. And this generally I think is done because it sounds kind of uh, like a harpsichord maybe, or it sounds very loud and fancy and actually pretty impressive. And the reason I'm calling this technique a myth is because it's commonly believed by most classical guitarists that this is how one should play trills in Baroque music. But this is a modern technique, which for me does not sound very Baroque, and it really does not map on to the sources we see from the time. Trills in the Baroque period on lutes and guitars were generally slurred like this. It's a very different sound because we don't hear two notes at once. We hear one note and then the other and then the other, just like when you sing. Da 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 da. You, don't ever, you never hear both notes at the same time. Myth number four, Bach composed music for the lute. Another commonly held belief by classical guitarists is that Bach wrote several suites for the lute and now guitarists play that lute music on the classical guitar. But we know now that Bach never wrote intentionally for the lute. Bach wrote the music that we generally call the lute suites today on the Lautenwerk, which is a lute harpsichord. It's a keyboard. And actually, when you look at the music, the keys that were chosen, the techniques and idioms used, it's very obvious that it's keyboard music, and most of it does not even directly work on a lute. For an in-depth explanation of these so-called lute suites, uh, you can check out the article linked below. Myth number five. When playing Bach, you should not add extra ornaments. Johann Sebastian Bach was a composer who wrote at the very end of the Baroque period, but he was a composer in that style. He was writing within a paradigm of stylistic rules, and in the style, performers are meant to improvise, embellish, ornament the music. So very often I hear guitarists say that you should not add anything to Bach's music, it's already complete. And it'd almost be an insult to Bach to offend him to say, I can add extra notes. But in the Baroque style, that's just how the music is played. Now it is true that Bach wrote more explicitly than many Baroque composers. In fact, he was even criticized by a guy named Scheibe once for explicitly writing out all things that are meant to be improvised. So even people at the time were wondering why are you writing out all these things which performers will improvise anyway? Maybe he wanted a little extra control, but certainly the music is bare enough in many, many moments uh, to embellish. But of course, if the music is too thick already and doesn't need it, well then maybe not. But in a sarabande, in a prelude, I think there's lots of room for extra ornamentation. So thank you guys for watching. Again, I want to say that the topics covered in this video are my own opinions, and I am very open-minded. If you disagree with me, let me know why. I'm very, I'd be very curious to know uh, where I might be going wrong. These are all just my feelings based on what I've read, researched, and played. So let's get a conversation going in the comment section. What other myths are there about the classical guitar that might need debunking, if any? So please do subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps the channel. You can also check out my Patreon page to directly support uh, the creation of more videos like this in the future. And I hope to see you all next time.